So we're here at the Green Versity Stadium at Gayfield Park tonight with the one and only Bobby Lynn. Bobby, welcome back. Yeah, it's great to be back. Um, managed to find my way up the stairs, no problem. <laughs> up here, I've been up here a few times. So again, it's been a wee while since I've been back up here, but it's always nice to get back. So just looking on kind of life now, kind of post-professional football. Firstly, how's the Lynn family? How's life, you know, with a little bit more free time than you potentially had before? <laughs> I'd say if you say free time, I'm not sure about that. Um, four kids, it's hectic. Um, little Bobby, he's six months now. Um, he was a main, not the main factor that I made the decision, but with the kids and my partner and, and her work commitments, I just felt staying, the commitment would be too too much. Um, I had to put a bit of time into the family. So that's when I became to the decision that I was going to play local. Um, I thought that that would help, but um, to be fair, Carly's great support. I've got a great support network around me for the kids, um, my mum and, 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 and other family. So they help, but they've helped for years um, for me to be able to fulfil football and play and, 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 and enjoy playing. So that's still the case while I'm at Lockheed. But um, in terms of time, I've managed to squeeze in a bit of time tonight, but um, everybody's doing great, thanks. Great, good to hear. And it is, it's great, you know, that we know how much of a family man you are and you know to be able mm -hmm. to give give that bit more time with, with the kids it's amazing how much you miss when you're away on you know Saturdays all across Scotland um, so so yeah it's great to see you mentioned that they're Lockheed United yeah um, your, your proper local club <laughs> how's football gone there for you for the, the first season then yeah it's it, Lockheed United is a club where I've grew up in Charleston which is pretty much Lockheed area um, and it's something I'll be honest from at an age I always felt at some point I think once you were finishing up you would go back um, and that's what's happened I've got good relations with them I know a lot of the players that was there I know a lot of the guys I know the manager Dougie Cameron I played with Dougie for a lot of years Jonathan Smart um, I know Gavin Tinley from my Dundee days so there was a lot of people that I knew at the club um, Derek Mitchell somebody I played with when I was in uh, schoolboys um, so he's someone that's involved with the club and obviously Larry Duncan was somebody, he's the owner, him and Tam McMullen. And, and again, I know all these guys, so there was a good connection there for me to, to choose to go there. Um, I did have offers to go elsewhere in the senior game. Um, and to be honest with you, and I get asked this a lot, did, did I ever consider them? And I didn't. I didn't feel I needed to. I felt um, the way we finished the season here, 10 years, I wanted to just finish up here and that was it. If anything, I would have continued here, but I felt with the family situation that it was the right decision in my career. So, Lockheed's been good. We won a cup. Um, we missed out on the league. We definitely could have been better in the league. Um, I think we dropped too many silly points. I think looking at next season, it's going to be competitive. Um, it was definitely a bit of a change and a culture shock coming from where I was to there. But um, I know we're playing lower leagues before and what it means to players and Boys are every bit as hard working as what they would be senior. So again, um, it's it's been an enjoyable year. We finished the season on winning the cup, and I think that's the first time they've won that in a few years anyway. So that was a nice finish to the season. And a good thing for you, you know, you've you've played a lot in the you know the senior game and being at that level again, the enjoyment of football again. Because I could imagine, you know, we, we've all played sport for a number of years. <laughs> yeah. At times we do get, not necessarily jaded, but it takes its yeah. toll in terms of yeah. fatigue and stuff. You look like you're really enjoying being there yeah. and, and playing football for football. I love football. Um, I've always loved football. Um, I'm, I'm not getting any younger. Um, I still love to play. Um, I'm, not a dis I'm not at a stage yet where I feel I need to stop. Um, whether I've got that support behind me, that support network with the family, they encourage me to play, they know what it does to me, what it does for me, um, physically and mentally, so I enjoy it, I enjoy it. Um, play, playing at Lockheed, it's different, It's um, I think people, I think the stereotype would be, going from the championship, you go to a junior league, it should be easy, you should score this X, Y, Z amount of goals, is isn't quite like that, um, they're a really honest bunch in that league and, and, and they work hard and they take their football serious mm -hmm. and uh, they, they deserve credit for that. Absolutely. And if we, you know, if we go back, we're, we're talking about you know, the 10 years here and if you look right back to when you were signed by Paul Sheeran, you first walked through the door here, could you ever have imagined that it would be 10 years, you know, Premiership playoffs, 
relegations early on, promotions beyond that. Could you ever have thought that you know that that was what it was going to turn out like? <laughs> you never do, don't you? Um, I've spoke about this many times. When Paul had signed me, um, I was just so happy to get back into senior football, and I felt it was the right the right time, the right move, the right people, Paul and Stuart Petey, to for me to go and try and get back into it and get myself going again. And I always maintain that. I think for a few years I lost my way a bit and wasn't really as hungry and never pushed myself and I felt when I come back in they really got me going again and I felt the hunger and desire was back to play and I think within a few years I'd won the PFA award here at Arbroath so that was a really that was an honour for me to win that so soon and coming back into the senior game. When you talk about the 10 years there's been so many highs and lows um, definitely more highs than lows and that's that's um, that's unusual in football because you tend to, to, to take a lot more lows than the highs. But um, my first season, we came in and got relegated, so they must have been thinking, "What have we signed here?" <laughs> Me and Ricky Little. Um, so that kind of set the tone. But then, obviously, when when the gaffer came in, when Dick come in, a lot changed. Um, the culture changed. Everything changed about the club, um, and obviously Mike as well. Mike cared that that for me transformed the club and and everything, the infrastructure and everything. We started to move forward. There was a lot of success in a short period of time. Um, everybody was on board with that. Um, I think you go and win two leagues in three years. Um, you narrowly miss out on the playoffs in between them years, um, and then you, you consolidate five years in the, the championship for a part-time club and we were always hungry, we were a close-knit group, we had some good players and, and the manager knew what he needed, he kept adding to that and I felt that was a massive factor um, and then we talk about the season where we finished, we managed to finish second, um, we were leading the pack for a good bit, second half of the season but it just wasn't to be, um, you touched on the playoff to the, the Premiership, just as I'm beginning to forget about that, Sorry, it always Bobby. comes back up, so... <laughs> The, the old penalty um, but listen that's football um, that's it I'm old enough and wise enough to understand that and, and, and these things happen still hurts still remember it really well um, it was a big moment but um, I feel overall in the journey that I've had especially that I've had here it's definitely been with the supporters we've, we, we've created these memories together and, and that's something that I'll always remember for the rest of my life absolutely well you know what a career here at Arbroath and you know, now an ambassador for the club. You mentioned Mike there, who was obviously our chairman for, for such a long time and, and really drove those those changes. How did it feel to get the call from Mike? Was it a bit of a surprise or you know yeah. what, what was your thoughts? Yeah, it was it was a massive surprise. Um it was just a new experience to be honest. I was I was unsure what, what it meant. So once we had that chat it was more meeting with Paul Reed and Paul explained what kind of avenues we go down and, and what doors it kind of opens for you and I think it's quite if anybody could slot into that position here I think it's certainly me yeah. um, I know I'm ambitious I'm young um, I still know the club I know that there's a lot of changes I feel I can be beneficial around the place I could certainly help the place um, I know that the, the supporters are they'll be hurting right now um, but equally I know that the players will be hurting um, I know that there's a lot of new players in I know there's a new manager Nobody likes to be relegated, so I know that the place will want to be hungry and, and rejuvenated to get going again. And I feel the same um, coming back in in this role that if, if I can help in any way moving forward, then I will do that. But I feel um, it's a positive on both both fronts, yeah. Absolutely. So it was obviously also announced as, as part of your announcement as an ambassador, you'll be the next inductee into the Arbroath FC Hall of Fame. Yeah. So firstly, congratulations on that. But again, it must feel pretty special to see your name amongst you know some of those big names: Jimmy Jack, Tommy Yule, uh, Eric Sellers, legends of yeah. the club. And and yeah. you know I think it's fair to say, and the fans will agree, you're a legend of the club yourself. Yeah. It must feel pretty good as well to, to have your name on that that board. Yeah, that was that was in the same conversation with Mike, um, and that was that was difficult to kind of take in at that point because that's that's huge for me that's huge it's a massive honour to be told that you're going to be inducted into the Hall of Fame um, it's a pretty big deal I've been here 10 years as everyone knows and for me it's something over the time I've looked at the board I've seen who's 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 been inducted into the Hall of Fame my good pal Stephen Doris yep. went in and, and being honest 
I remember sitting that night saying to myself, I would love for that to be me. I would love that. Um, you need to earn that. And I feel, for me, it's just a real privilege, a, a genuine privilege that, um, that, that the club are going to do that for me. So I'd just like to thank everybody for that. You know, you've touched on it there, the, the, the kind of legends that are there. And, you know, to hear you say that, that, you know, you reflected on it years ago mm -hmm. and, and now kind of that coming to fruition and whatnot. I think it's fair to say the relationship you've had with the fans here at Arbroath is is second to none. Yeah. I've certainly not known it in, in my generation <laughs> for there to be such a, a great yeah. bond between, you know, a player and the fans. Um, how, how did it feel for you, you know, to... If we go back to like the early days, building that relationship with the fans, was it something that you felt kind of just came naturally and quickly, or was it just an over time thing that it just built? And I know you've got a really good relationship mm -hmm. with the with Task across mm -hmm. at Tutties as well. Was it just that? Was it a gradual thing, or was it you know I'm here with my people sort of thing? It's it's quite a unique one that because obviously I'd had a career before Arbroath and all the faces I could remember that would give me pelters are the ones that I'm close to now and that's genuine um, Big Alan Innes Colin Beatty these guys yeah. I've not forgot um, Simon Reynolds what they called me down at the side the pit side when I was at East Fife but that's a wee joke that we have between each other and I feel that's probably your answer to that um, did I ever see myself playing here for a period I didn't because when you're playing elsewhere you never look and say I'm going to sit play for this particular club when I come into the club we started off, as I said, we got relegated. I felt things started to build like uh, from when, when Dick had come in. We'd won League Two. I felt the day we won League Two on the last day, I think supporters remember players and teams and that was a great team that won that league. We managed to win it on the last day and I think they kind of go with it from then. And then you just start, I feel you just start to build as a person, as a player on the pitch. And I felt really comfortable and confident in front of who I played in front at Gayfield and I feel as I got older that that manifested that helped I, I really felt like I embraced it and and for me I, I certainly played my best football at Arbroath um, I've won two PFA awards here and I feel as a player it's without your teammates you're never going to win that so to win that was, was unbelievable um, and it's something I'm really proud of um, and that tells me that i obviously done something right while playing here um, and I think po probably more more so the, the connection with the fans is maybe off the pitch <laughs> after games, sitting where we are now, yeah. um, plenty of beer, some slow gin, um, vodka. Um, we had some good nights, do you know what I mean? And I think when supporters work all week and they come and watch your team play, and they see players coming out and kind of letting the hair down with them and sitting down with them. That, yeah, yeah, I think I certainly was one of them more more than more more, more often than, than that, that's for sure. I know your testimonial um, dinner will either go down in legend or infamy, yeah. potentially. <laughs> and then I, uh, I wasn't at yeah. Ricky's one, but I believe yeah. Ricky's wasn't far Ricky's off it as wasn't well. Far off. I can't um, really remember much of it, Ricky's. It was, I think it was quite burst early on there as well. I heard you were having um, great conversations with his mum at three yeah. o'clock in the morning at the bar in the <laughs> I was at the reception, that's right, that's <laughs> right. So, uh, um, but no, great. that was great. And Ricky's somebody who I admire as well. Ricky's a great guy and deserves his testimonial. And again, what I could remember of it, but no, good for him. We'll move on a little bit from now. So what we wanted to do was obviously, as an ambassador of the club, I think a, a big part of that is representing the fans. Yeah. You know, having those links with the fans that you've got. So what we did was we put a bit of a, a questionnaire out to the fans just yeah. to pull in some questions that the fans wanted to ask. I've got Andrew here as well yeah. who has come in to help out with some of the media stuff. So right. we'll, we'll both just ask some of the questions. So um, I'll pass over to Andrew to kick off with the first one. Hi, Bobby. Hi, Andrew. Right, first question for you. Uh, this one's from Carol. Yeah, yeah. this could be anything. Well. This could be anything. Yeah. What's your most memorable day at Gayfield? At Gayfield? Wow, right, I'll have to think. Um, for me, for me, it would, I'd have to look at this now. I think the most memorable for me, if I'm looking at it from a personal point of view as well, we, we played Dundee in my last season. Dundee's a club that I started my football at. Um, again, I played 10 years here, there's been so many games I could choose from, but the one that meant most was 
we drew one all. Um, we were struggling that season. Um, I'm, I'm saying that day because I can remember the week before we'd had a really bad loss to Cove and the manager had wanted me up early and he spoke to me and we had a real good chat about things and I felt like he was putting a bit on me that day to go and produce something for him. Um, and we went 1-0 down early on in that game and I managed to score a free kick um, from 30, 40 yards it was. We only drew the game. Um, we definitely could have won the game and I know it's just a draw but for me personally um, my family was there um, that I had pals in the Dundee end there was, there was supporters from Arbroath and I just feel for sentimental reasons that one I just felt it was a big moment for me um, to produce that on that day um, again it would have been nice to win it but for me the one that sticks out is that one so we've had we've had quite a few questions about this next topic. So yep. it's a bit of a two-parter. So one of the hot questions was, do you have any plans to get into coaching once you hang up those boots? Yeah, yeah. I think um, as I say, it's a question I get asked a lot. Um, right now, I'm I really do enjoy still playing. Um, I think again, you've got to just embrace playing for as long as you can. And then when you feel that you can't, then then I'm going to look beyond that. I'm not in a rush to kind of force myself to to kind of get into the coaching side of things. Right now, um, the kids take up a bit of time, um, and obviously we're still playing. So to have that extra added into it at the moment probably isn't something I'm looking at. But in the future, it's certainly something I'll be looking to do. And then part two of that question, which I'm sure you can guess what's coming next, would our growth ever be something on that? You know that agenda that maybe one yeah. day you can you can walk through the doors here with yeah. a bit of a different hat on and a whistle around your neck and, yeah, uh, and think, manage here. I think Ryan, that would it would be sensible to say yeah. Um, I love the club. Um, we had a great bond. We still do. Um, I think being here and having the connection I did, and I think I done well. And I think as I got older, I would certainly be looking in the future. If that was possible to be to be involved with that, I think you've got to be ambitious. You've got to you've got to go out and work hard and, and want something. And it's certainly something in the future. If that opportunity had arisen, then definitely. Hundred. That's good to hear. Yeah. And I think mm -hmm. the fans will be pleased to hear that one as well, Bobby. I'll hand back to Andrew. He's yeah. got another one for you. Okay. Uh, one about players now and again. This one had uh, quite a few people asking. Yeah. So, uh, First of all, who was the best you ever played alongside? Yeah. And then secondly, who was the best you played against? Okay. The best I played alongside? It's got to be Simon Murray. Um, he was here for a year. Was it a year and a half? A year? I think it was a year. In that year, he scored 20-odd goals, him and Paul McManus. Um, he just started out, um, you look where he is now, so much admiration for him, for what he's done. He's he's a nice, genuine boy, um, he's worked hard his whole career. Um, he's somebody that deserves everything he gets in football and in life. I've got a lot of time for him and I feel what he achieved here to get his move to Dundee United then set him off to where he is today. And that comes down to hard work, dedication, confidence, um, discipline and, and just going away and looking at yourself and seeing how you can be better um, in terms of finishing incredible incredible the best finisher I've played with um, he was just I can remember his goal out here we played Montrose it might have been his first and he's went for the halfway line from the left hand side he's going one on one with the keeper I'm thinking if it's me getting a bit, ad, a bit edgy to go and just put it past he just rolls it past the keeper with this drag back Touch, puts it in the top bin, top of the net, and I'm just thinking, wow, brilliant. Um, and there's a good photo from that as well. He's picked here's Jim <laughs> Spence here. Um, but a great photo. And uh, no, I would have to say Simon. That's that's a pretty easy question that I definitely would say Simon Murray. And who who that you've played up against then? Who's the best? Played up against against. Hmm. I need to think about that one. A lot of good players over the years. Do you know what? This one might be a bit random to people. 
Um, I wonder if he'll ever see it. We'll tag him. There, yeah. was, there was a guy, there was a guy, this was just recently, I just came across him in the last couple of years, two or three years, Nick McAllister at Air. And if he is, if he does see this, you'll know. Um, he was certainly told to do something to kind of rough me up and um, I think that was under Lee Bull and, and maybe a manager before that, but I would have to say him, he sticks out to me. He would get in behind me, get in about me, heels, nip, try and talk to me, try and put me off, over physical and tackles, leave it in on you, but no issues with that, no issues at all with the other game plan. And I can remember once out here, um, he just, he had me so riled up. And I just felt against him then every time I played against him, and only come across him a couple of years ago, I thought I'm up against it with him. Um, I always felt he, he was pretty aggressive and onto me and there was no fear. And, and I felt that uh, it was a tough afternoon against him. I think maybe four to six, eight times we played against each other. I would, I would have to say him. It's good to hear things like that yeah. though, from a from a player's you know insight into you know the stereotypical yeah. one would be I played against X Y or Z he scored loads of goals he was yeah. out of the mark blah 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 but you know to hear that of of what you would class as you know talent I'm talking in a player, I'm talking against somebody I've played against directly yeah. um, I think it's better for me to kind of say that rather than somebody that I played against that scores goals yep. I think all day long somebody would go for that. I'm just talking, again, it, was, it might sound a bit random to people, but I'm trying to look back and I'm thinking, this, this guy, was, it was a tough afternoon against him. And I think, again, you maybe look for the flamboyant right back at one yeah. of the bigger clubs, but I would need to say Nick McAllister at air. We'll make sure we tag him yeah. so he does see it. Yeah. Um, so last one, Andrew, just yeah. for, for popping over to you. Yeah, the last one is, uh, how big a part did the fans play in the decisions you made to stay at Arbroath for so long? Um, they were they were huge. They were huge. Um, I think the first six months when I'd come in under Paul Sheeran, I was just getting to know the club. I'd signed a two-year deal at that point. Um, Dick had actually phoned me to, to, to go to Forfa, which they rejected and signed a two-year deal extension with, with Paul Sheeran. So... To start with, it was obviously down to the manager, but from then on in, I felt it was it was a no-brainer. I just felt the the connection with the fans and the love from them just grew. And and as the years have went on, my family, my mum, my brother, my sister, my kids, um, my partner, like they've all just kind of jumped on board with it, and they've been involved with Task and, and over at Tutties, and I just feel it's a real family feel to it. Um, certainly around the place and, and I know that things can change and there's a, there's a few changes at the club but I don't think you could ever lose that kind of the feel for the heart of the club and, and what it means to people and that'll always be there so I think the fans it was an easy one to stay on um, I continued to sign two year deals up until my 10th year um, it, was a, it was a tough decision to, to make to leave but again it was 10 years I was here I felt it was the right one but um the, the supporters were massive in, in that decision and, and also coming back, I had to give it thought and I feel that coming back, I know what I'll, what I'll get from them and they'll know what they'll get from me. So again, I think it could only be positive. Well, it's great to hear, Bobby, honestly. It's, you know, you're, you're one of our own. Mm -hmm. um, I, think, I think it's fair to say the fans, you know, we've, you've built that relationship for, for such a long time. It is great to have mm -hmm. to have you back in here. It's been an absolute pleasure to have you in for a chat. Um, we know the fans are really keen to see you yeah. here again. You've been here when you've not yeah, had games yeah, yeah. on a Saturday. Um, you must get pestered something <laughs> rotten when you're out and about. But, you know, it's great Half to see... Half of them don't notice me now. You know? <laughs> <laughs> they don't notice me now. Do you know what I mean? There's a few greys in the beard and in the hair. They don't notice me. Some That's of the it. Kids hiding with that hood up. I've seen you with that I've parka seen, hood up. There's one guy so. walked past going, do you know who that is? And the wee kids are going, I don't know who that is. Where's McKenna? Where's McKenna? <laughs> so, <laughs> that, was, uh, that was funny, so... Oh, well, I'm sure you'll see them plenty this season. Yeah. But um, like I say, we just wanted to say a thanks for coming along yeah. and uh, congratulations again on, on both the Ambassador role and, yeah. and the Hall of Fame. And we'll look forward to seeing you this season. Brilliant. No, I appreciate it. Thanks for having me on. Cheers, Bobby. Okay.